If you listen up and you do these six things, you'll never have to work again. And you're probably having doubts thinking well, like, what the heck? There's no such thing as magic bullet or, you know, a secret. Uh, and you've probably had hundreds and thousands of people try to sell you snake oil before. I didn't know these things when I was younger, so I didn't do them. I started doing them in my mid 40s and it's still not too late for me. It's a proven method and it'll work 60% of the time, every time. Every time. That doesn't make sense. I'm probably gonna get a lot of grief for this first thing that I'm about to tell you. The first thing that I'm telling you that you shouldn't do is work for the man. Working nine to five. Working nine to five. The way to make a living. If you're a corporate lackey, you may have a chance to advance and you might even get lucky and kiss the right butt in corporate America. But if you're unlucky, like I was, you might kiss the wrong butt and then your chances of future advancement is pretty much gone out the window. I went to UCSD, I studied biochemistry and I wanted to be a doctor, or was that my parents? I didn't get accepted anyways to medical school. And so I ended up working in big pharmaceuticals and startup biotech companies for over 10 years. I thought I was doing the right thing by trying to climb the corporate ladder. But you know what I realized was that the ladder was rigged. Not everyone is gonna get promoted to vice president or senior vice president. Those positions are few and far between and corporate America workers are plentiful. I worked over a decade in these companies and I finally figured out that it just wasn't for me and I wasn't gonna go anywhere. And if you're happy collecting a salary and some mediocre benefits and a couple of weeks of paid time off, then by all means, the corporate job is for you. But don't be fooled by thinking that the job offers you more security. People tell me all the time that owning my own business and working for myself is really risky. I earn a living on commission. So when I don't help a client buy or sell a home, I don't make any income. And is that hard sometimes? Sure. But what isn't hard? You know, companies like Amazon, Apple, uh, Microsoft, and those, these other mega corporations, they just recently laid off a lot of workers. And you need to ask yourself, how stable is that? The feeling of stability is actually an illusion and you're basically just taking the blue pill. You take the blue pill. When you're working for someone else, you're basically making that person rich. Start your own business, start a side hustle, do something that'll give you a bigger stake in the game. Your parents were right. Start saving early in your life, and I mean early. Stop buying stupid shit. I know, I know. I was told that when I was younger also, and I didn't listen to anyone. When you get older, those cool things are no longer important. I threw most of that stuff away and it took me until my 40s before I realized this. And it's still not too late for me, but I would have been probably further along had I listened to these people. The best rule of thumb is that you should save somewhere between a minimum of 20 to 25% of your gross earnings when you're living on your own. And if you're living with your parents, try to save like 50% of everything you make. Yes, 50%. I mean, what other expenses do you really have? I mean, if you're living with your parents, take that money that you should have been paying for rent anyway and save it. Then when you finally do leave home, you're gonna have a nice little nest egg that you've saved up. Start doing this as soon as you can and as soon as you're making money. Next, manage your money and it's gonna take care of you. If you let money manage you, it's always gonna be holding you back. If you start your own business or you start a side hustle, make sure that you put some money away and invest it in different areas so that you can create long-term passive income. Oh, and one more important thing that you, I want you to remember is that there is no such thing as a shortcut, none. Wanna know the best investment you can ever make? It's called you it'll pay you back 10,000%. Buy legitimate self-improvement books from established authors and improve your knowledge. And here are a few of my favorite. E-Myth by Michael Gerber, Never Split the Difference by Michael Kramer, The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, Atomic Habits by James Clear, and Compound Effects by Darren Hardy, just to name a few. I left some links below so that you can find these books to purchase. And don't worry if you don't enjoy reading. Um, these books are all available on Audible. 
I would recommend consume these books with vigor and intensity. The more books you read, the smarter you're going to become and the more opportunities you'll be able to recognize when they present themselves in front of you. If you aren't willing to consistently improve yourself, then you're going to miss opportunities that are going to smack you right in the face. Another thing that you might want to do is make friends and collaborate with others. This is something that I didn't do. This is something my parents actually never taught me or explained to me that it's really important. Seriously, it wasn't common for me. You always want to learn from others. Take what they've done and R&D the crap out of it. R&D basically means rip off and duplicate. My business coach have told students and the people that he mentors that there are so many people that are willing to share what they know. I'm not saying that you want to reinvent the wheel, um, but don't steal their content, you know, and don't break any copyright laws. But you can learn from what others have done and then collaborate with them so that you can then develop your own identity and your own brand. It's about learning and making slight adjustments along the way, and you'll probably make thousands of adjustments before you truly understand it. When I first started in real estate industry, I thought I was smarter than the average agent. And the truth is, I didn't want to collaborate with anyone. I saw all these other agents as my competitor. And as a result, I started in the worst housing market in 2008, and I was struggling. It wasn't until somebody recommended that I hire a real estate business coach that I started to improve and started to take care of my clients in a way that helps improve my business. I had the opportunity to learn from other agents that were just more successful than I was. Only then did I realize that I really didn't know what I didn't know. Next, I would recommend that you buy your first real estate property as soon as you can afford it. You can buy your first home with as little as 3.5% down on an FHA loan. And also, did you know that you can use an FHA and a VA loan to even buy rental properties? Most people didn't know this. These programs, they thought that were only for owner-occupied, but that's actually not true. There is a way that you can use these loans to invest in rental properties as well. You're gonna hear from others that will tell you that real estate is a terrible investment. Someone like Grant Cardone tells people that they shouldn't buy a house, yet he started a capital fund that then invests in real estate. Maybe, just maybe, he's not taking his own advice. Look, I'm not saying that you're, you're gonna have enough money to buy a bunch of rental properties when you get first get started, but you can buy your first home. Grant is telling people not to buy but instead give him the money so that he can invest it in real estate. I mean, come on. I own my own rental properties and the first property I rented out was actually the first condo I ever bought. I mean, I lived in that condo for many, many years before I had enough money to buy my next property. Implementation. Implement, implement, implement. An amazing plan isn't the worth the paper that it's written on if you don't do the work. I mean, how many times have you decided that you wanted to start something and just kept putting it off? Only to look back months later and then feel guilty about not getting started. Procrastination isn't laziness. Rather, it's actually a behavior that is caused by stress in our life or some negative misbelief about ourselves. One way to avoid procrastination is to look at your motivation of what you really want to accomplish. Are you afraid that you're gonna lose something if you don't do it? I mean, take for example, if let's say you didn't prospect for business and then you don't prospect for business means you're probably not gonna make any money. And if you don't make any money, then you may not be able to make your mortgage, right? So this fear of becoming homeless because you can't afford to pay your mortgage could be a strong motivating factor for you to start implementing. It's also known as the away from motivator. On the flip side, if let's say you had a motivation that was more pleasurable based, then the motivation is an attraction. You might want to prospect because you want to earn enough money so that you can reward yourself and go to Europe. This type of motivation is called a towards motivation. Generally, away from motivation works better to start and implement a project. However, if you consistently do the work and you're further along and there's no longer a threat, that motivation starts to weaken. By switching to a towards motivation at that point, it's gonna help you stay more consistent. This is the last piece of advice that I think I can offer you, and that is to get a coach or a mentor. I mean, oh, get five of them. 
And I'm not joking about this. Spend your money on getting coached on things that you don't know and that you want to level up on. Keep in mind that there are some shitty coaches out there. I've hired a couple of them in the past and honestly, I feel like it was a mistake. Be sure about who you're gonna hire as your mentor. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on coaching and I've learned a few things about which coach that I would hire. If they tell you that there is some mystical art or hocus pocus related to your success, run. Run, Forrest, run. Run, Forrest, run. Seek the advice of those you respect and then maybe get their recommendation. Ask them what they decided and how they decided to choose and why they chose that person as their mentor. I've hired multiple coaches in different aspects of my life, from financial planners to help with stocks and mutual fund investments, from CPAs who then help me with my taxes and reduce my personal liability. I've hired personal trainer to improve my health. When it comes to business coaches, this is where most people really go wrong. Hire a business coach that is strictly in your business and they do nothing else. If they don't do what you're doing, don't hire them. They don't know. A coach who has left the business 20 years ago won't be on top of what the current changes are and so as a result, they may also not be the best fit. Mentors are also great coaches because they're free. You can also find someone in your business profession that is just more successful than you and you can ask them for advice. They'll be able to give you guidance and then their time is valuable so you know, don't waste it. If you don't have a plan to do the work, do them a favor and just don't bother them. Everything in life is like a video game especially if you want to be good at it. You start at level one in the video game and then you fight very weak creatures, you collect a few items here and there. Along the way, you begin to level up. And as you level up, you get better at the game. Doing anything in life is the same way. You can't jump to level 40 because you just aren't good enough and you'll end up dying in the game. This is the same in life. Starting at the beginning, learning from others, practice and improve. Most importantly, you need to consistently play the game. Otherwise, it's game over. As a thank you for watching this video to this point, I left a link below where you can reach out and get a copy of my very own personal profit and loss, as well as personal budget tracker. I created this tool basically for myself. It allows me to track things like how much I make, how much I need to save, how much I have to put away for taxes. It's actually a really useful tool that will allow me to then know exactly where I am. And if you click the link below, I'll be happy to send you a copy of this uh, P&L worksheet. If you're looking for a real estate mentor, and want to get started building your real estate portfolio, there are a lot of organizations and group out there that you can find. They're gonna be a great starting point for you. And if you're in San Diego and you wanna think about getting into a real estate as a real estate agent, reach out to me. I can then have a conversation with you and try to see if I can help you get started as well. And if you're in different parts of the US, let me know and I'd be happy to put you in touch with them as well. You've heard this before. I'm Scott and you've been Real Estate Informed.